On January 4th, the first robotics season kicked off. A small group of students traveled down to Memphis, Tennessee early that morning to pick up the new parts for this year's robot. Whenever we went to Memphis, me, Mr. Slayton, Lucas Rick, and a father of one of the team members uh, all left really early on a Saturday morning and went down to Memphis, Tennessee, and we got there about 9 o'clock. And after that, we got our kit of parts and learned the game that we were going to have to make a robot that's going to have to play. And then later on that day, we came back and helped design one. That night, the whole team gathered together to assess the situation. The point of the game is to go over a truss-like substance with the ball to another robot. Over the next six weeks, the fabricators frequently met together to build the robot. We had to work on it quite a bit. There were a few Saturdays I had to come up, and many days after school we worked on it. So, but while the fabricators were busy at work, the programmers met to write a program for this year's robot. But they had a problem. All right. All right. Now you use your dry side, and then you get yeah, oh, man. The beginning of the season, I was skeptical of not their abilities but just of their work ethic but now that i see them you know in the area and what they do now because they had downtime in the start of the season i'm starting to believe in their abilities back in the shop the fabricators were making crucial decisions about the details of the robot whether whether it's on the top or whether it's down below so well, this, see, this puts it really horizontal, and I, I think, according to that over there, it, it would probably work horizontal, but we'll have to have some assistance to lift it. The original problem we had was mainly trying to figure out how we were going to shoot the ball into the big goal, because it is a, it's a two-foot diameter ball, and it's not very small. So, And we have a perimeter, we have a certain length requirement that we have to meet, so that was the main difficulty. Fortunately for the programmers, mentor Bryant Harrison, a Murray High School teacher, came to the rescue. You know, I've done, done a lot of programming in the past, and uh, so, uh, you know, I kind of mentored all the programming core, and, and we, uh, we learned how to use LabVIEW, and, uh, and we pretty much programmed uh, most of the robot. By the fourth week, they had managed to write a program that should control the robot when loaded onto the C-Rio. We had finished programming the majority of the robot before uh, the robot was built by testing it on our test, yeah. test robot. <laughs> <laughs> on January the 27th, members of the team took the test bot into the hallway of Calgary County High School to practice driving. It worked. <laughs> Meanwhile, sophomore Colton Rains persists in the shop. Because we only have a six week period to finish the entire thing, so it's yeah, it's a time crunch. Well, they never wanted to go on. Where's the putty scraper at? I had pretty good though. We had this year we had more kids from Murray come than we did from Callaway, so that was interesting working with all them. And then, uh, but now all in all, we got a really good team that all helped. So. Y'all want to get back down with that, bud? Yeah. Now that our fabrication team has put the floor panel into place, then we can have our lead electrician, Eric Mikulchik, wire on a robot. The last day comes around and the team is pushed to finish before the end of the season. Yeah, don't, we don't need, I actually take that off and come around the other. Colt, you get to go ahead, let's take this bracket off, he's going to move that. The bumpers need to be made, the pneumatic system needs to be installed, and the robot needs to be tested. The bumpers are made of rubber pool noodles, measured and cut to the dimensions of the robot. They are then taped together and stapled down. And then the way we're going to do this, I don't want to tape them to the bumper, I don't think. I don't think we've done that way in the past. So wrap a roll around them, and then we're going to look at how we fold them. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah, that's good.
As the bumpers are being made, the pneumatic system is being plumbed. Pneumatics operate on compressed air. Compressed air is forced in one end of the piston. The pressure extends the shaft outward. Then the air is forced in the other end of the piston, retracting the shaft. You have to do a turn is. The blue tubing carries air from the compressor to the pneumatic cylinder to lift the throwing arm. It would probably work horizontal, but we'll have to have some assistance to lift it. And he's trying to shoot it right now. Yeah. Shoot it? What? Perhaps that's the problem. I don't get the point of that now. With the pneumatics finished, it is time to test the robot. Is going on? Yeah. He's going to need to hang the front on. Let's go. 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 Let's go
At the end of the day, they bagged up the robot again. Back at school, they built a shipping crate to ship the robot to St. Louis, Missouri. We actually made our pneumatic arm here in the shop before the World Championship. They redesigned the robot so that it uses pneumatic cylinders to raise and lower the feeding arm. The extra pneumatics used some of the compressed air so the shooting arm didn't have enough air to throw the ball high enough. They added two extra air tanks to add more volume to the system. A test on the calibration field verified that it worked. In the World Championship, however, we had an issue where a ball went behind our shooter and actually um, impeded our shooter from collapsing so we could take another shot. That is also called a dead ball, in which it costs uh, our team some points for having a dead ball on the team. But it was easily fixed with a strip of rubber tubing. The next match was going well until the shooting arm wouldn't drop back down. The battery was poorly secured, so during the match it would slide around snapping wires and cracking cylinders. These could be replaced, but they continued to break. The alliance selection came about, and although the team played well in their last match, they were still not selected. At the end of the day, Team 3843 MCRT was ranked 74th in the Curie Division at the 2014 First Robotics Competition World Championship. For Laker TV, this is Eric McColchick.